Is there such thing as too much testosterone? Yes, if you are taking it synthetically, there is absolutely a way to have too much testosterone. So if you are on TRT, or you are natural like myself, or you are somebody who's considering TRT, this video is for you because nobody is talking about this. This is gonna piss people off, I don't care. I'm just gonna speak the truth. I want you to think of your body as a car. I want you to think that your heart is the engine, your brain and your hormones are the transmission, your liver is the radiator, and so on and so on and so on and so on. So we have organs the same way a car has organs. Imagine taking this Honda Civic and just flooding it with a Ferrari engine. Just imagine what that would be like. You are born with X amount of testosterone receptors in the body, okay? And those receptors are only geared up for exactly the amount of testosterone that it can handle. Meaning a Honda Civic's wheels only handles the torque of a Honda Civic or a Honda Civic's transmission only handles the speed of the transmission of a Honda Civic. So what happens if you put a Ferrari engine in there? The transmission blows, you blow a gasket, right? You might get away with it for a period of time. Eventually, something will snap, crackle, and pop. You have testosterone receptors everywhere. They're in your skin, they're in your hair, they're in your organs, they're in your toenails. They're in every part of your body, literally, head to toe. So when you flood yourself with androgens like testosterone, it's fine if you are giving it the testosterone that those receptors have previously received. It knows exactly what 650 is like because when you were 21, you were at 650. Now that you're 50, you don't wanna be at 200, you wanna go back to 650. Beautiful. In that case, you will probably end up in a much better situation than if you're like the majority of the population right now, which makes it popular to put your stuff at 1,000 to 1,500 because it's in the uh, normal high reference range. Yeah, it's in the normal high reference range for somebody with good genetics who has high hormones, sure. You're not sitting there taking a Ferrari and throwing it to a Honda Civic, that's not how it works. There's a reason you were born with a level of 650 at your peak. That's what makes everything work beautifully. When you're at 650, you operate like somebody who's at 950, where somebody who's at 950 who drops to 650 starts to feel low. You feel at your peak at 650. So what happens when you go over that limit? If you lose your fertility, whoever is making us on this earth has put us down here to procreate. But what happens when you remove fertility from the equation? Think about it. If you have somebody with zero fertility, I'll show you somebody without a libido. Can there be an exception? Sure, but it's not the rule. Meaning the large majority of people who lose their fertility through exogenous hormones will completely crash their libido because there's no purpose of having any more. So if you remove the ability to procreate, why would you have the desire to procreate? But what happens when that fertility disappears? It might take six months. It might take 10 years before you're finally infertile. Or you might be one of those rare people that stay fertile for as long as you're on it. If you are looking at this video right now and going, this guy's absolutely crazy. Where's the science? I'm not waiting for the science. I'm looking at the bodies. But here's some good food for thought. What happens to you, let's say with libido, for example, if your estrogen is too high or too low, it crashes. If your prolactin is too high or too low, it crashes. If your progesterone is too high or too low, it crashes. If your cortisol is too high or too low, it crashes. So what in the world makes you think that yes, when you have low testosterone, it crashes, but when you have high testosterone, it doesn't crash. Of course it does. All the other hormones do the same thing, but we're so addicted to having testosterone, to having this ego-based number on a piece of paper that you think it's okay to blast yourself up to 1200 and stay there even though that's where you never would have ever been before. Now, if you're somebody who knows when they were 19, 20 years old, you had an 1100 score, I was one of those people. If I did start TRT one day, I know I can push my stuff up to 1100 or 1000 and that's okay because my body knows what that is, my receptors know what that is, my organs know what that is, it's perfectly aligned. But if you don't know, stick in the middle range. You'll be much safer, much happier, and you won't do any permanent irreversible damage. 
So yes, high testosterone can kill your sex drive. High testosterone can cause side effects even if all your other blood work is in alignment. So, do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you hate my guts after this? Leave a comment below. Let me know about your TRT experience. Let me know if you're considering TRT. Let me know if you read about TRT. Let me know everything in regards to TRT. I'm out. I have a good one. This one pissed them off, but it's okay. Another day. I'll be back for another video. Ciao.